Hello Laddingtons and Lassingtons. I'm checking in from a secluded spot at a lake near Caer Morhen, the Witcher's Keep. So as you might have discerned from the title, today I will talk a little bit about the Witcher games and books. And uh, before you ask, no I have not watched the Netflix series for the simple reason that I don't want to be annoyed by it because you know if you have a good opinion on something then you see uh, you know a lot of forced uh, diversity in it it destroys it I get annoyed and uh, yeah I if I want to watch something nice I don't want to be be annoyed and have to um, overanalyze things so I'm just not going to watch it I'm just gonna continue enjoying the books so I'm halfway through now and uh, that's enough for me to yeah recommend the books and talk a bit about them now first and foremost i do recommend you to if you have to choose between you know if you have a limited amount of time i would recommend you playing the third game it's probably the best game i've ever played you know it's just an injection of european folklore and uh, mythology and aesthetics um, into it so the aesthetics of it is medieval Europe with mythology and folklore absolutely love it gain so much aesthetic inspiration from it so yeah that is something I definitely recommend and what you get in the game that you don't really get in the books of course the aesthetics and uh, the music and that feel but the books are very entertaining, very well written, you know, they're a classic and they're a hit for a reason. Now I would say though, before I begin to talk about more the two topics, which is racial relations and sexual morality, I would also mention that you don't really need to play the second Witcher game. I haven't played the first game, but I don't think you should really play the second game unless you are a really hardcore fan. Uh, I played it once, I actually streamed it on Twitch was uh, actually five years ago I did that. Uh, shout out to all of you who were with me back then. Uh, but that game is not even nearly on par with the third game. So if you're gonna, so if you're gonna play one game, just play the third game. And uh, yeah, you're in for a treat. Actually, on a second note, I think you can actually play the game if you have the time and opportunity. And since many of you are actually in quarantine, Right now, I suppose you do have the time. What I like with the second game is that they explore more of the racial tensions between the Squiatel, which is the non-human gorilla, and the humans. So you see this screenshot before you right now I took in um, the second game. Yet race is the very reason we fight. We have pointed ears, yours are rounded. We are few, yet long-lived. Your kind multiplies like vermin, though thankfully expires quickly. So if you want to have, so if you can't read the books, but you have access to the game, you can play the second game. But the reason I don't necessarily recommend it is because gaming wise, it is quite difficult in the sense that it's unsmooth, if that makes sense. Whereas the third game is just a true pleasure in every way. But yeah, play the second game if you want. Uh, it deals more with the racial component of the um, series at least. And even if you haven't played any video games earlier, you know, it's like you play a story. It's not like you are playing a game, you play a story. Um, so yeah, great, uh, absolutely great game. Uh, the books, there are two themes in the books that I thought would be, would be particularly interesting to you, my dear audience. First and foremost, perhaps the relation between humans and non-humans. So the humans can be seen what I thought about was the Saxons and Welsh and you have non-humans primarily the elves being Welsh being driven off from their lands into the mountains and the humans coming in uh, a few centuries later to the continent um, and you know establishing kingdoms of their own they can be seen as Saxons now of course as I said the aesthetics it's medieval it's not migration era but the sensation of it and especially since the elves they have uh, Welsh names, uh, etc. So um, that is the relation. And then you have, you know, racism and discrimination in cities from humans against non humans. So you have that feel to it the entire time, but it's not moralizing in that sense. It's more about the Witcher being in between the two. So he's 
a human, but he's also not a human because he's a mutant and you know he is viewed with suspicion, so he's an outsider anyway. So both in the games and the books you can stumble upon guys such as this who says the following Readily, you are a mutant, a freak, a useless relic of a bygone age that should be burned like a withered branch. So, as I said, he's being viewed with mistrust by a lot of humans, but he also has his profession. He's a witcher, so he kills monsters to protect humanity, basically. That being said, moving on to the second theme I'd like to discuss in regards to sexual morality. Uh, something to note as well in regards to the sorceresses is that they are infertile, so therefore they can be promiscuous. But, uh, you know, some guys, they will say that the Witcher books promote degeneracy. It doesn't really. I found this really interesting quote in regards to Triss Merigold. As far as her erotic life was concerned, Triss Merigold had the right to consider herself a typical enchantress. It had begun with the sour taste of forbidden fruit, made all the more exciting by the strict rules of the academy and the prohibitions of the mistress under whom she practiced. Then came her independence, freedom and a crazy promiscuity which ended, as it usually does, in bitterness, disillusionment and resignation. Then followed a long period of loneliness. So you see, yeah, there is a lot of promiscuity in the books, but it's not seen as something good. And the way it is written is quite crude uh, in the language and I like that it's uh, it's nothing um, fantastical about it it's very base human nature on display and that's also part of the charm of the books that it's very you know gritty and filthy like that and of course you know crudeness sexuality it goes into it but I wouldn't say it is something that hails up sexual decadence as something virtuous it's just it's there just as plundering of villages it's there because that's how humans are in these situations so the sorcerer says they are promiscuous because they are infertile basically uh, witchers are also infertile S applies to Geralt of course too so he doesn't really have that option to settle down and have a family so he and Jennifer they have this sort of complicated relationship so those are two aspects that I thought were particularly interesting but it's not black and white it's more like it's there and uh, you know the characters are developed around it but it's not something he is not promoting tolerance for the sake of tolerance uh, he also points out that you know in the cities where there are dwarves elves humans they tend to stick to themselves then pogroms and uh, distrust and mistreatment it appears because it does appear when humans live close to each other so it's not you know, uh, the moral of the story is not to be tolerant to outsiders, it's more about, you can view it at least, you can view it as, you know, when you have different species or races living next to each other, there will be conflict. Then of course, if you want to interpret it as humans are being, um, having prejudice and being mean to others, yeah, you can say that too. Uh, it doesn't bother me in the least, I think it's still a good, interesting thing. And then also something I can say for both the books and the game is that you know, there is a lot of gems in terms of you know, societal issues and economics etc. that you can um, appreciate, that I appreciate. You know, Invisible Hand of the Market for example, just thrown in there uh, for good measure. It gives it a, a bit more mature feel to it and uh, yeah, I sort of like that when you can pick up these small details and uh, in terms of the books themselves I said it was I said they were entertaining they are dandelion is uh, yeah my favorite character I would say not that I relate to him but uh, I think it's fun when he yeah just is himself basically so yeah entertaining books good stuff definitely something I can recommend so uh, yeah that's my thoughts on uh, the Witcher and again if you haven't played the Witcher 3 you are missing out. I'm actually replaying it now because I, as I said to you, I was going to do it when I hit a hundred thousand subscribers and uh, yeah, it's long overdue so I'm uh, replaying it but I'm not doing any let's plays because I just want to enjoy it by myself and because, well, you know, it takes a bit of time to make let's plays and I would rather make book reviews instead. I think that's more productive and more uh, appealing to more people. 
So anyway, I hope you are all staying safe in the quarantine and uh, I hope you enjoyed this little talk along the this fine lake. So I will see you in the next video. XXO, boo!